Good morning to you all. Thank you for being here. Um, I really like also the geographical distribution of our audience, which usually I am one of the advocates within my ministry to promote um, Mediterraneanist view of foreign policy. And I think being here today uh, fills me with pleasure. So good morning. Uh, good morning to um, the representative for the freedom of the media. And good morning to you all, uh, especially those who are involved in academia and especially uh, those um, coming from the young generation joining us today. On behalf of the Minister for Foreign and European Affairs and Trade, Minister Ian Borch, who was unable to be with us today, I would like to warmly welcome you and thank you all for coming together here in Valletta. Seeing so many of you here, especially young participants from the wider Euro-Mediterranean region, is both reinvigorating and encouraging. A discussion on one of the current global challenges facing our society, that of mis- and disinformation, can only be meaningful through a whole-of-society approach which transcends geographical borders. This is foreign policy in action. We are grateful that so many high-level experts in the field, as well as representatives of international organizations, including from the OSCE and the Council of Europe, have accepted our invitation and joined us to share their expertise and engage with us in this important debate. Allow me to express the Minister's personal thanks to the OSCE representative on the freedom of the media, Ms. Ribeiro, for having accepted his personal invitation and for being with us today. Allow me also to express my gratitude to the 3CL for assisting the Ministry and our permanent mission to the OSCE in the organization of this cutting-edge event. Dear participants, the strengthening of democratic institutions and human rights, including media freedom, is an objective of Malta's foreign policy strategy. Freedom of expression, freedom to hold opinion, and freedom of the media are a fundamental linchpin of a functional democracy. This is why Malta has felt the need to launch a legislative reform that includes significant changes to our constitution. Through these proposed amendments, the existing provisions on the protection of freedom of expression will be enhanced, while freedom of the media will be enshrined as the fourth pillar of our democracy. The challenges facing media freedom are more complex than ever, resulting in significant negative impacts on the media systems themselves and their function in society. Allow me to focus on just a few of the manifold challenges. The media landscape itself has changed drastically, with the online sphere having taken almost completely over the traditional role played by TV, radio, and newspapers. This overtake has had an impact on the whole setup and modus operandi of these media, including on their economic sustainability. To survive, they were forced to adapt to the new trends of online consumption, having to shift not only their content, but also their business models. This is causing a serious existential crisis in the realm of traditional media, as revenues shift and attitudes of consumers switch towards digital sources often made available for free. As a result, a word with printed newspapers, as most of us have known, might not exist for much longer. Pluralism, so essential to ensure that societies are well informed with facts, is indeed in danger. In danger. But the challenges facing media freedoms are not only caused by the digital realm. In recent years, we have experienced a growing global distrust and anti-media sentiment. <clears throat> the, 
journalists remain targets of attacks, both online and offline. The heinous murders of journalists in EU member states, namely those of Daphne Caruana Galizia in Malta, Jan Kuciak and his partner in Slovakia, Peter De Vries in the Netherlands, and Georgios Karaivas in Greece are testimony of this. Allow me to make a little parenthesis here to underline that my country is committed to ensure that all those involved in the murder of Daphne Caruana Galizia be brought to justice. The three hitmen have already been convicted, while the alleged mastermind is awaiting to stand trial by jury. The danger faced by journalists in their work takes another dimension in times of conflict. In the past months, we have seen unprecedented attacks and crackdowns against journalists and media houses caused by Russia's war of aggression on Ukraine. Unfortunately, scores of journalists have paid with their life. And then there is the scourge of mis- and disinformation, the challenge upon which we decided to focus our conference. Misinformation and disinformation are not new phenomena. False and inaccurate information, whether spread unintentionally or to manipulate, have always been present. But the digitalization of information and civic space and the proliferation of social media platforms have significantly shifted the paradigm. Mis and disinformation now spread faster than ever, cross borders and target the most vulnerable in our societies. While traditional journalism was governed in general by a set of professional and ethical standards that put the public interest first, the online world is driven by totally different objectives. The main interest of many platforms is to keep us engaged only with a certain type of content, thus lowering the likelihood of exposure to pluralistic media content. Take, for example, the COVID-19 pandemic. This was not only the first global health crisis of our time, it was the first ever of the digital era, and it brought with it an unprecedented infodemic. We have all seen the spread of mass misconceptions and conspiracy theories, which not only put people's lives at risk, but also instigated hatred and divisions. Information was not scarce, but the proliferation of false and misleading information, both online and offline, was the first global test of society's resilience to misinformation and disinformation. It also led to the wider acceptance that the phenomenon exists and that the norms and goalposts have changed. Digitalization and the resulting growth of the online realm also has had positive repercussions, however. The stimulation of the digitalization of the civic space has created more opportunities, especially for the youth, to engage and reclaim agency with political issues. Youth has also been the driver of significant social and political changes in the Euromed region and in the world. This is why we wanted to have youth as the main focus of this two-day discussion. It was also important for Malta to gather at this conference youth from the wider Euromed, Euromed region, specifically those hailing from the OSCE Mediterranean partner countries. Due to its location, Malta has historically played the role of bridge between Europe and the Mediterranean region. For us, there is no doubt that our present and future are inextricably linked. Therefore, we want to foster cooperation on common challenges and work together to find common solutions. I want to convey a very simple message to all the young representatives participating. You are actors of change and have a role to play today. When it comes to the digital world, you are undoubtedly 
the biggest users and significant contributors to through the creation of content. I do not doubt that you all have experiences with misinformation and disinformation. We all have. Youth is diverse in genders, ages, cultures, sexual orientations, and nationalities. Some of you might have suffered more from hate and extremism fueled by misinformation and disinformation, but none of you is or should be a passive target. I do not agree or believe that you are more naive or susceptible than the older generations. Myself and those older than me have undoubtedly more to learn from you on how to tackle this challenge than we have lessons to teach you. What is certain is that there is an urgent need to work together to improve our media and information literacy. At the opening of this conference, anchor Alex Grech pondered on whether media, technology and education have been the culprits behind this disinformation conundrum. <clears throat> <clears throat> I tend to agree more with this hypothesis that media, technology, and education can get us out of this mess. Education and media literacy will help improve skills, including social ones, to empower us to better navigate through the complex information and digital landscape, while taking full advantage of the amazing opportunities of the media and digital space. This is why I hope that we can work together. We want to hear your ideas to face the information challenges. Your experiences are valuable, and I am happy that there has been general acquiescence on this during yesterday's debate. Dear participants, I look forward to reading your manifesto and the discussion that you will have later this afternoon with the OSCE representative on the freedom of the media, Mr. Reza Ribeiro, and the head of the Information Society Department of the Council of Europe, Mr. Patrick Pennings. We are pleased to bring this two-day discussion to a close with such an interactive exchange. The office of the RFOM has already carried out valuable work on the subject, and we are sure that her office and the Council of Europe will find the outcome of this discussion and the perspective of the youth of our region valuable in their considerations. This conference is not the end of the process. We will keep on working with youth on these issues. We will continue to listen to you because it is you that can instigate direct change. Thank you for your attention.